Hi, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Good News Conversations here on the Albuquerque Journal Podcast Network. I'm your host, Good News reporter Gino Gutierrez. Very pleased to be joined this week by Director Dave Simon from the Parks and Recreations Department at the City of Albuquerque. Director, welcome to the podcast, and thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure. So, Director, we're talking about a very, very cool uh, initiative that the Parks and Rec Department has actually brought back this year, and it's helping families in Albuquerque beat the heat, and it's called Operation Cooldown, and I was wondering if you could tell our listeners just a little bit about what this program is. Well, absolutely. Operation Cooldown, first of all, is a comprehensive set of, of initiatives and efforts the city is taking to help Albuquerque. Kirky residents get through the hottest months of the year. And that includes other things like opening cooling centers and having resources available for the unhoused. But uh, I'd say the, the funnest element of Operation Cooldown is our park sprinkler play element. And uh, what we do, Gino, is we activate uh, four parks, one in each quadrant of the city, whenever the temperature is projected to be 100 degrees or hotter. And, uh, you know, so we'll turn on the sprinklers and, uh, you know, create large outdoor splash pads for kids and families. Yeah, and I got to see it firsthand actually last week uh, visiting uh, Quigley Park. Uh, it was an awesome sight to see. When I first got there, I kind of noticed there was families on the periphery of the park. They were kind of waiting for the sprinklers. Uh, I allude to it in the article that when the sprinkler heads came up and they started shooting waters, it was akin to like a starter pistol at a track and field <laughs> event. Those kids ran headlong into it. I'm curious, uh, Director, what inspired the idea to activate the parks? You know, I think it's a, it's a great throwback for many people back to their childhood, their youth. Uh, maybe some times when we, we all played outdoors a little bit more. Uh, parents were a little less afraid to leave their children playing outdoors while they were making dinner. Um, but to me, it's just bringing back good old-fashioned fun. And uh, when you see the number of and the width of the smiles on the faces of not only the kids, but their adults and guardians along along with them, you know, you see just unmitigated smiling, peals of laughter, you know, you know, it's a good old fashioned, honest, good time. And uh, I think we need to do more things where we bring children and families out into uh, the outdoors and into nature. And good old fashioned running through the sprinklers is sort of an iconic thing for the summer. And uh, I'm, I'm so glad we could bring this program to Burkinos. Yeah, and you, you mentioned that in a press release you sent out that this is really good old-fashioned fun for the kids, and that's definitely what it looked like at the park when I was there. I mean, they were running through the sprinklers. The families were getting involved. The parents were getting involved. Um, a few kids were brought, brought pool, pool toys and things of that nature. Have you had a chance to go out to any of the parks yet? You know, uh, not only do I like to get out to the, to the sprinkler parks, Gino, I, I'm one of those guys running through the sprinklers. I mean, you give me an opportunity to run through water on a hot day, I'll, I'll, I'll lead the charge. So, you know, I really just enjoy it. Uh, and I enjoy uh, mingling with the families and with the kids because, you know, uh, it's a good way to stay young, is to, to act young. And we all still need to uh, remember that part of us that's a child in us and uh, running through the sprinklers and some summer water play just brings it out in me the same way it does, you know, for these young kids. So I really enjoy really just seeing, though, our citizens take advantage of our wonderful city park system. I mean, these parks and green spaces in our city are really our community commons. And we are succeeding when they're activated and busy and full of families and full of, of all kinds of activities. So this is another way we can make these very important community public places of even greater value you know, to our citizens. And I would imagine, too, Director, it also gives incentives for these families to get out on days they wouldn't normally be getting out of the house. I mean, when you think about high temperatures, you know, you think about staying inside, standing next to a fan, your air conditioner being cranked up. But this helps, gives family a reason to get outside. And like you mentioned, go to these parks and enjoy nature. Because when I was out there, not only were they playing with sprinklers, but most of these families brought food. They brought picnic items. They were sitting out under trees. They were enjoying nature. So it seems like it's almost like a twofold type deal. Absolutely. I think if you're going to like throw in a paletta 
you know, or an yeah. ice cream cone to the sprinkler uh, play. That's about as good as it gets. And, uh, you know, we do time uh, the sprinkler play events for, for pretty much the peak uh, heat times of the day. We do run the sprinklers from 1 to 2 p.m. on Operation Cool Down Days. And typically our peak temperatures are around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But going from 1 to 2 gives families an opportunity to extend that lunch hour. It's a little cooler, so we're, uh, we're not getting as much evaporation um, a little bit earlier in the day. And it also times up sometimes a little bit better with a family schedule and also with the schedule of our employees. So I think that early afternoon time, it's a great time uh, to take advantage of all the things you can do when you get out of the house. Yeah, and that water's cold. That water is really cold. I was hit a couple times, and it kind of sent a a shiver up my spine. Um, But it's just a very awesome event. Uh, And I know for you, parks are near and dear to your heart, getting families out. Um, Are you planning in the future of hitting up one of these parks pretty soon? Oh, absolutely. Now, you know, we we have to wait for the predictions of our our weather forecasters, you know, on when the next 100-degree day uh, is coming. It looks like there may not be one this uh for the next seven to ten days but the minute we see one on the horizon you know we'll get ready for the third round of operation cool down and the we're rotating these four parks around the city and so the next day where we have these peak 100 degree uh temperatures the four parks that will be turning on the sprinklers will be redlands park in uh, northwest albuquerque uh, Loma Del Rey Park, excuse me, lo, yeah, Loma Del Rey Park, ex, excuse me, Loma Del Norte Park in uh, northeast Albuquerque, uh, the Singing Arrow Park in southeast Albuquerque, and then the fourth park will be Dennis Chavez Park. Um, and these are all four tremendously beautiful parks. They also are surrounded by neighborhoods. A couple of them have community centers in the park. So I'm expecting, you know, like huge epic turnouts for these uh, sprinkler events, and I want to invite uh, all of our Burkeño uh, kids and families uh, to get out there if it gets hot. Yeah, and it's going to be an awesome one, and for uh, you mentioned that's rotating parks. These parks are in groups. If our listeners at home are interested, they can find more information on the groups on the city uh, website at www.cabq.gov forward slash parks and recreation. That way they can kind of keep an idea of where it'll be going, but As you mentioned, Director, a little bit earlier, it's not just the parks that are a part of Operation Cool Down. The city's also taking initiatives for cool down centers as well around the city. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, you know, extreme heat can uh, not only be uncomfortable to many of us, it can also be dangerous, even uh, life-threatening. So we, uh, the city is take, takes a comprehensive approach to uh, handling extreme heat temperatures in the same way we would, we would handle extreme cold in the winter. So we, uh, we want to particularly pay attention to the needs and special needs of, the, uh, of children, of the elderly, the sick, and the unhoused. And all four of those populations are at much greater risk under extreme heat conditions. So we have our community centers and uh, open as cooling centers. Our social service partners with the city are actively handing out water and seeking to get uh, people who are un- unhoused neighbors into safer spots, uh, both during the day and overnight during these extreme temperatures. So it's a full hands-on deck effort, it sounds like, because the temperatures came quickly this year. So Yeah, you they got, did come you, a little uh, earlier. I mean, typically Albuquerque experiences its hottest uh, months in June and July, with the peak temperatures usually being somewhere between around July 20th and right around the 4th of July. Uh, this year we've already had two 100-degree days before June 20th. So this could be, you know, uh, natural variation, you know, in, in temperature and climate, uh, but also uh, long-term impacts of uh, slow but steady climate change uh, in the Southwest. So it could be an indicator that we might be seeing hotter temperatures uh, earlier. We might see warmer temperatures overall, you know, in the desert Southwest as our climate changes. And, uh, you know, we need to be adapted and adaptable and resilient for those things because they are huge um, uh, they're huge things that are happening so director I'm curious for our listeners or for any of our uh, readers that may be 
you know, avid outdoors people, they might be wanting to go outdoors when it's really, really like warm, not maybe a hundred degrees, but warmer outside. What should they be taking with them? What should they know before they head right. outside? Well, you know, New Mexicans are smart folks when it comes to uh, uh, enjoying our tremendous outdoor climate. And I think a lot of people understand some of the real basics uh, to stay safe and healthy in, in extreme heat. The first would be uh, bring and drink plenty of water. In fact, the best place for water when you're exercising outside is in your body. So drink water before you go outside. Tank up, if you will, and then bring lots of water, more than you think you may need for any outdoor activity or hike or something. Secondly, you want to uh, liberally use sunscreen of uh, SPF, a uh, very high SPF value, 50 and higher is, is really a good practice. Long sleeve, light clothing that covers as much of your skin area as possible along with a good wide-brimmed hat. Those are essential elements for the outdoor New Mexican. And then pay attention to the food and beverages that you do consume. Uh, you know, it's important that you have electrolytes in your body, some salts, you know, don't overdo it, but you do need to intake salt when it's hot and you're sweating. And really, I would advise people to avoid high sugar beverages uh, during these uh, periods of high heat. They really are counterproductive, as is alcohol, uh, if you're out in uh, extreme temperatures. So last question for you before I let you go. Um, you mentioned that you will probably be hitting up one of the parks when the temperatures go over triple digits the next time. You're going to bring any pull toys with you? <laughs> you know, I typically just run through in my work clothes. Oh, okay. I mean, when it, you know, when it's, uh, when it's that hot, you know, what people don't got to remember is you, you, you basically can dry off in five minutes or so. Yeah. So, um, uh, but that's a great suggestion, Gino. I will... I will think about what I'm going to bring. Maybe I'll find one of my old uh, squirt guns or uh, one of my water cannons from my canoe. And I would encourage people to look for me out in the parks. <laughs> and, if, and, if, and if you're a kid or a grown-up and you see me and you want to try to nail me with your water balloon, uh, bring it on. So you, you'll, be, you'll be locked and loaded and ready for him. Director, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And for sharing some valuable yeah. resources on where New Mexicans can go to cool off. Thank you, Gino. And there is so much good news about our parks in Albuquerque. Appreciate you helping us share it. Of course. Director Simon, thank you again. You can find this episode and all podcasts on the Albuquerque Journal website, abq.com, as well as YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. If you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to our print edition or online subscription at, uh, at abqjournal.com forward slash subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Read, hear, and watch. <laughs>